after a U.S. military probe that concluded that it was a series of errors, both technical and human, that led to the American bombing of a Doctors Without Borders Hospital in Kanduz, Afghanistan, several military personnel will be suspended and my face for their disciplinary actions for this incident, Margaret. And we know the government was under a lot of heat, a lot of people asking for an independent investigation. The government is putting forward the results of their own investigation, and there's more questions than answers. And the first thing is the fact that they already did that same day, hours before the hospital strike, they did a previous strike of the target that they wanted to hit, that it was the headquarters of the Afghan intelligence service, they actually hit a warehouse, an empty warehouse across the street mm -hmm. from the headquarters. Hours later, trying to get the same target, they hit the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that we know that it raises more questions than answers. The other one is, suddenly we know that they have technical glitches, technical glitches in the airplane that prevented the pilots from communicating with, uh, central con with, with headquarters or master control. Now we know also that they suddenly were targeted by a missile that pushed them out of their flight path, preventing the targeting system to being really, really accurate, and that's what they're claiming that are the reasons, both human errors and technical errors that provided for one of the biggest casualties disasters of the Afghan war. Yeah, an MSF trauma center, not a legitimate military target. And I want to point out, this was a 29-minute assault. And yes. 12 minutes in, MSF, MSF actually called and said, you know what, we're, we're, under, we're under attack here. They didn't actually relay that message to the pilots until after they had finished, yes. which, you know, some casualty, some loss of life could have been prevented. Right. I, you know, how classic, they're blaming this on a malfunction, a glitch in the system. Oh, really? And something that was really troubling that John uh, Campbell came out and actually said, is for, he's saying that the personnel who requested the strike, those who executed it did not undertake the appropriate measure. So he's directly blaming, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a command issue from higher up. It's those rogue pilots that really didn't follow directions. He's going to personally handle some of their disciplinary action, as well as handing it over to a U.S. Special Forces Command. And that's going to be an interesting story for us to cover coming up. Exactly, because we know that although they are trying to clear the air, we, you know, we reported <clears throat> early October, we were reporting how Doctors Without Borders were claiming we sent our coordinates months in advance. They knew. They knew that we were a hospital. Also, they know that there's been a series of raids leading up to this bombing, mm -hmm. to this strike. There was a series of raids of the hospital because they treat both Taliban and uh, Afghan soldiers. You so, have Taliban sitting ducks exactly. in a place, and it was just too much. It was it was too sweet of a pot, and casualties be damned. That's what this looks like to, to me as a report. It looks like that to everybody looking at it. Yeah, it's tough. We know now that the U.S. government is accepting responsibility for the strike to this hospital, but at the same time, it seems like they're trying to blame the weakest link in the chain of command instead of really going further and explaining the truth.